What's going on, everyone? So according to ESPN's Sham Charania, uh, which is crazy in and of itself, but congrats to Shams, right? If anyone deserves that role, uh, the Woj role, uh, it is Shams. But Shams says Orlando Magic Center Wendell Carter Jr. has agreed to a three-year, $59 million contract extension per his agent, agent Mike Miller uh, of Lyft Sports Management. Carter secures his maximum extension and an $82 million uh, in new deal through 2028-2029 season. Uh, so this is huge for, obviously, Wendell Carter Jr. as well as the Orlando Magic. Orlando wants to kind of pick up where they left off last year, uh, being a playoff team. Uh, and being a team that can kind of start taking the next step, hopefully get to a conference finals. And Orlando made some nice acquisitions this offseason and are clearly trying to kind of get their, their core pieces, kind of get their core guys uh, locked up and, and ready to go, right? The, they recently gave Franz the the uh, contract extension. Also, um, you're seeing them kind of all the, the key guys that they want to keep on the roster long term. Um, but they're also going to have to start making some decisions soon. Um, and Wendell Carter Jr. was one of the guys that was kind of rumored uh, to be potentially on the trade block. Uh, Orlando had conversations about Wendell Carter Jr. with several teams, Lakers included, uh, and yet nothing kind of came to fruition. Now, obviously, being open and listening to discussion and, and you know, if you get some crazy blowaway offer, doesn't necessarily mean that because you're listening – you want to trade him, but there was a lot of talks of like, you know, hey, at some point, they're going to have to start getting off of guys, right? There's an argument Paolo Bencaro is probably best at the five. They've had the most success with him at the five. Even when he was like on the Olympics, um, he was really good at the five. And a lot of talk is like, he's probably going to evolve into that at some point, uh, that that might be where he is best suited uh, in, in today's NBA. And then you got guys like Jonathan Isaac and when he's healthy, uh, what he brings to the table and how good he can be. Uh, Mo Wagner, right? They're, they're flushed with guys that can kind of play that center power forward spot for them. Um, and the question was, is like, okay, are they going to, do they look to try to flip? Do they look to move Wendell Carter Jr.? Well, now I think that at least this season, Wendell Carter Jr. is probably going to stand pat. I don't believe I could be wrong. I haven't actually looked into it, but I just think because of the timing of the extension, I don't believe he can be traded the rest of this season because I know that there's a cutoff. Um, you know, maybe he already made the cutoff. Maybe that's why they did this extension, but I thought it was it already passed. Um, I'd have to double check again. I just saw this news and wanted to talk about it because the Lakers were so active in trying to get Wendell Carter Jr. And he was a guy that was on the list of centers that the Lakers wanted and me, right? The Lakers really need another center. And Wendell Carter Jr. would have been perfect. Guy that could play the four, play the five. He's not a true seven-footer, you know, burly type of center, right? He's not the, the big body center you're looking for, but he's so skilled and so versatile that it's one of those things, like, you can't really, like, you're going to turn that down? No. You know, he's 6'10". He's got the weight behind him. He's 6'10", 270. So he definitely has the size, strength, and weight behind him. But as far as that, like, you know, seven, seven, one. 270 guy, you know, he lacks the height, but just slightly, right? He's got a good wingspan. This is a guy that can defend at the rim, a guy that can defend out on the perimeter, right? He's very versatile. You slot him alongside Anthony Davis, and the idea was like, this is a guy that could make a huge impact uh, for the Lakers on both sides of the basketball, and now it looks like he's probably off the table, um, you know, and you can't really wait till next season, right? So you're, you're kind of forced to look elsewhere for the center spot. This basically takes Wendell Carter Jr. off the table for the Lakers, which is unfortunate, right? Like, you know, because the market for centers is already incredibly thin. You now have, like, Clint Capella, which I've talked about more so on As It Stands Lakers. Um, I've talked about how I don't hate the idea of Clint Capella because he's still one of the best offensive rebounders in the league. He still can give you some level of rim protection. He's not the guy he once was, not like Houston, Clint Capella, but he is a guy that is still a very good rebounder, give you a double-double, play, start alongside Anthony Davis, play off the bench, be that lob threat, right? And J.J. Redick's new offense system could be really good. But more than anything, he's a $20, or $20 million expiring contract. So if it works, great, you can keep him and then just give him a new deal for, say, $10 million a year. 
And if it doesn't work, you just let him go. Or let's say it works, but it's not quite what you're looking for. You can just let him go. You clear off twenty million off your books. Plus, let's say D Lo. Let's say you don't trade D Lo, right? Like, and you you unload all this salary. LeBron can opt out. I mean, you could free up quite a bit of money in that regard. So now that Wendell Carter Jr. is off the board, it puts the Lakers in a tough spot because it's like, okay, well, do you really want to do the Clint Capella route? Probably not. I think the most likely center at this point is Giannis Valanciunas. I think Valanciunas will kind of, more likely than not, is going to end up being a Laker, right? Um, we've heard countless reports about it. It's still like one of the few Laker trade talks that are still being rumored, still being thrown out, still being reported, um, where everything else is kind of cooled down, everything else is kind of quieted, uh, except for the Valanciunas talks, because he's the guy that it just, it really does seem like the Lakers are going to pull off that deal to go get a Valanciunas. He's cheap enough, um, not going to cost a first, so you'll be able to go get him, you know, a couple seconds or something, and uh, pull off that deal. Maybe you even go get some other pieces, right? Because the, uh, the Washington Wizards, have several other pieces besides um, uh, Giannis Valanciunas that could make sense uh, to add to kind of give you some key upgrades that probably wouldn't cost too much, right? Like Kyle Kuzma, you know, like could you get Valanciunas and Kuzma for a first in a couple seconds? Like that could be a possibility. Malcolm Brogdon. Now, the only concern with Malcolm Brogdon is the amount of games he plays, right? But he's, you know, 6'4", 230, He's, he's point of attack and defend, shoot the basketball, make plays. I mean, he's exactly what the Lakers need, right? But can he play more than 40 games a year? That's the problem. But if you could get something like that on top of uh, a Valanciunas and say, you know, only have to give up a first, like that could be a pretty good position for you to be in. And then you still have another first and other pieces that you could potentially trade if need be. Um, the other option would be uh, Walker Kessler, which is my favorite. I actually liked it more than even the Wendell Carter move just because of the long-term upside. Now, obviously, Wendell Carter Jr. is not like 33 or anything like that. Um, but, again, with Wendell Carter Jr., he's kind of closer to his ceiling than his floor. Right? Maybe with the Lakers playing alongside LeBron James and Anthony Davis could kind of unlock him a little more. But, you know, he also is not going to have that for that much longer, right? And he's 25, where you look at a guy like Walker Kessler, he's a guy that's just pure, he's just been playing on pure raw talent right now, and his numbers aren't that far off from Wendell Carter Jr. already. Um, he's a guy that's a legit 7-1, seven, seven has shown a little bit of the ability to stretch the floor, knock down the occasional three, uh, make plays uh, out of the post, right? Like, this is a guy that could make some noise, um, but... Utah Jazz reportedly want two firsts for Walker Kessler. And I would give up an unprotected first all day if you could lift the protection on the other first that the um, Utah Jazz have and give up a first, go get Walker Kessler. Like, do that today. But Danny Ains and the Utah Jazz are probably going to take their time, probably going to be patient. Um, however... You know, Danny Ains does value the Lakers' picks. He's on record saying that they're the, the most valuable picks um, on the market. So, you know, things things change. And, look, Danny Ains has shown if you're not part of the future plans, then then I'd rather have the assets. So we'll, we'll see. see how it all plays out. But Lakers need a center, and it's unfortunate another one just, just came off the board. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion, so I pass a question on to you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? What are your thoughts? Um, are you disappointed about Wendell Carter Jr. Uh, now being off the table for the Lakers uh, via a trade? Do you think, like, no, I mean, we were probably never going to get him anyway. Uh, again, there was never a, a guarantee he was available. It was always kind of just like, oh, maybe he's available. Maybe he'll be uh at some point, right? And so it is one of those things where it's like you were probably not getting him anyway. So why kind of cry over something that you, you were unlikely to get anyway? Um, but, again, Lakers really need a center. So would you prefer them to go after, like, a Walker Kessler and just pony up the asking price? Uh, do you think go after a Clint Capella and then now you got an expiring contract that you could trade at the trade deadline or, you know, let fall off the books uh, 
at the uh, at, at the end of the season for free agency? Would you rather go and you know get Nick Richards, somebody, whoever? Because um, again, the Lakers really do need a center. So whatever you do, you gotta find a center uh, if you're the Lakers. You gotta get that done because Lakers, they, they, we've seen it already in preseason, and I think it's only gonna get worse. Maybe not so much regular season, but once you get to the playoffs in particular, you're going to need that other big body. But again, let me know down in the comments. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me not. me enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. Not subscribe channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.